map control with the hot oh, oh, back. Oh, old friend, it's nature's prophet. And no, it's Void Boy. He's not Alliance here. They're looking to pick it up. It goes right into the hands of Omega Poner. They're off lane grab here. All right. Fun. How do you feel about the drafts right now, Dakota? Uh, happy. Good, just in general, just pleased about how the way the, the drafts have gone. I agree with you. I mean, anytime we can see Beastmaster Nature's Profits fan, I'm down. Yeah. New picks abound. This is a manly lineup. Yes. We could have a highlight real play on our hands here. I hope so. I'm excited. Now, you. you know, anticipating a lot, Leviathan, they need to get that first win. They were off to a slow start, 0 and 2. Void Boys, this is their first match. You got to get up to a fast football. start for them. They got to push past. They got to look, they got to leave the Pat Soul era behind them. They got to make their new Pat Soul. I mean, 747 is highly regarded in his own right, but they don't have that second man like they used to. No. Pat Soul's off to China again. His yeah. school days are over. Five, he said, I've had enough with the U.S. I'm going to China. He could have stayed maybe an extra uh, couple of weeks or something like that. Well, he left like in the middle of, uh, like in the middle of, I think, December or January or something like that. So Pat Soul is gone. The legend himself. Uh, he's up there in the NA leaderboards. He's not there anymore, unfortunately. He's out. He's out of here. Yeah. And now the Void Boys line up. They're going to have to do it without the legend. That is Pat Soul. So we're going to jump into the game. It is Void Boys versus Leviathan, Dakota. Mm -mm. And uh, we'll see how things turn out. So far, no five-man aggression in towards the aggressive lanes. They don't go looking and snooping into the jungle. There's no jungles really to, to ward. There's no, no there's no Chen. There's no Enigma. You don't have to really put that much pressure on, on the lineups of uh, Void Boys in their jungle or Leviathan in their jungle. So. Man, when I used to cast... Leviathan back during the Summit 2 qualifiers. They were the team that always did the five-man rush. Normally on Radiant side, they'd go up to the north and swing right through the jungle to go for an early first blood. Yeah. But, you know, this time, obviously, they move together and you already got this pesky little freaking tree on scouting them out and... You know, it's just not the same for him. So. It's going to be a lot of different summons. There's a, It's kind of a zoo right now between the Nature's Prophet as well as the Beastmaster. Ooh, yeah, Beastmaster trying to get his one ward down, but they already stop him from getting in there. So that's going to be a bit troublesome for him. He was hoping to probably get that ward down and, you know, obviously either block out the camp or give him that bit of side vision. But look at this already. Disruptor's like, get the hell out of here. You're not getting that ward down. Throws out the early thunder strike as well. Wastes a little bit of mana, but that's fine. They actually really nice play coming out from Leviathan, uh, the Beastmaster, throwing up the the hawk and making sure they don't ward his uh, ancient stacks because he knows that's going to be one way to get back into the game. He will stack it up eventually, whether that's with the early call of the wild boar or later on down the road. And then of course he'll take it with the wild axes. That's one. Way. That is the old school way. Like you would just sit around ancients for a long time as Beastmaster, not get anything from lane, and then just wild axes and go to work when it came to getting levels with uh, the ancient stack. But now it's more, let me be in lane for a little bit. Let me see what I can do here. And then level two boar is actually the reason why. It's so strong. And level two and beyond, I should say. Nice block early yeah. on here in favor of Leviathan. He gets in that beautiful spot where he gets to work with the high ground. And he's getting the benefit of Flying Zebra getting right in the face of Mr. 747. So an awkward needed. telekinesis. You know, it forces out the early refraction. But it makes Shibby, you know, being able to push on forward and just get that early CS push. Zebra's getting chased down by a creep. He's like, come, come on, man. I have 150 HP. Can you not do this? He's got to try to pull it to the creep wave and the range creep will hit it and that doesn't actually apparently pull it off him I, I don't know why that melee creep is going to town finally he Stop says, it. okay that's enough Stop it. now the range creep's gonna bring down that was a, a microcosm of the mid lane probably yeah, and he actually gets a double stack over here on the side cam perfect for shivy as well so. excellent work sets that up on the way out i don't know how much that little head start helped out someone like shivy but he's, he's gonna make work with it but look at this we got fly here uh, he's trying to get up there with a sentry ward to block out the camp. Yeah, and he, he gets it. it down, but the boar is right there to see it. So There's like a really finicky place where you can like counter that sentry, like sentry the sentry. I'm not sure what. Shredder gets the first blood down bottom, and the Furon walks a bit too far up, throws up the storm hammer, gets the kill with the LSA connecting probably as well. That's uh, unfortunate position. He's so far up from the Nature's Prophet. Shouldn't have been there in the first place. Well, I guess, be back uh, in lane two. You know, we saw Flying Zebra disappear in the mid lane. I guess the Nature's Prophet didn't anticipate him getting there quick enough enough to help out, but quickly a teleport all the way back to the bottom of Mega Poner is going to be handing over that first blood bounty to Leviathan. Don't really want to have that, but now he gets down the side ward, so he'll be able to see any sort of incoming pressure now. So now they have a creep wave in a really good spot for Shredder. There's not really any experience going for Omega Poner. He doesn't rotate back to the jungle. Meanwhile, middle lane, 747, race, but he gets the refraction off just time. The Fisher comes out, and Shibby's going to oh, give away no. the kill. It is going to be split up between the creeps, but still a big kill coming on the side of Void Boys. Very nicely done from Mr. 747 with the assistance there from Fly to just kind of set it up for him to knock it on down. That's devastating for your Shadow Fiend. And oh, was that a glimpse back? 
Not the best glimpse at Force. went a little too far for Swan, and now he's going to chase after Newsham. Newsham, a couple right clicks away. Telekinesis. Get to the. Oh! That's the cliff him. LSA yeah. doesn't connect on Omega Poner. They want to turn this. Fisher comes out. 7 HP. Last right click comes through, and Omega Poner will get the kill. Trades happening left and right. And Fly again, getting involved with another one here. Your Earthshaker is just kind of roaming about. It just seems to be at the right place at the right time once more. And all the meanwhile, this means your Mercy, please, Gyrocopter is just like, hey, free farm in the top lane. He's going on the time of his freaking life up here. There's yeah. not really much to stop him. Beastmaster's still stacking. He did counter ward that sentry. So apparently this one here actually was just enough to counter that counter. Counter the sentry, rather. Counter the counter. Counter the counter. Mm -hmm. And with that, Trib needs to kind of get his groove back here. Shadow Fiend about level four and a half. Same actually goes for your TA. TA at 12 and six. So it should be. So relatively even there. As I pointed out, though, eventually they are going to make sure they get that sentry down or something. You don't want to allow 747 to get the traps. And, you know, it's the first trap that gets the Templar right into the face of Shibi. It's the second trap that prevents him from getting away. That's the one that kills him. That's the one that kills you. The so. one slows But the second, like, two slows at once coming through yeah. is not really what you want to deal with if you're Shibi. And the good thing is... As a Shadow Fiend, he can step back to the jungle, wait for them to get those wards up, or not even deal with a level 6 Templar Assassin because he has the entire jungle to work with. There's no jungler. He's got a couple of stacks here. Another stack going to be coming from, from Flying Zebra, so being very selfless. Level 1 Rubik, almost level 2, but that's to be expected at this point. Flies level 2. This is not the same fly. Bottom rune spot is picked up for the Lina. The TP was a bit too late, and then comes back top. Rocket Barrage, and there he is again, Mr. Fly with the Fissure at the right place at the right time. Helps set it up, and it is going to be Mercy Please, the Gyrocopter who gets the hit. 3-1 to one now, a lead for Void Boys. They're very happy with this early game right now. This is going very solid for, for Void Boys, and I think the biggest thing is that they're even in CS mid. Void Boys 747, I mean, and then again, you haven't taken the stacks coming out from Shadow Fiend, but there's also probably an Ancient stack. There is for the TA. Just one stack. I don't know if there's any of the jungle stacks. There are jungle stacks as well, so they're really making sure. Like, this is the exact same game plan. Bottom lane, Stormhammer, right click, LSA, Telekinesis, Omega Poner will fall yet again. I almost missed that one with how quick it was, but they get the kill. Nicely set up again, and it is Shredder who gets it. He's the one that's really thriving for this Leviathan lineup right now. He should have his power treads now complete. We'll have to see what he decides to go from there, maybe putting more into the mobility, getting the blink, or maybe he steps off and goes right for a Mask of Madness, or even just a BKB. We'll have to see. I've seen spends of all colors today already, Mott. They don't, they, there's no real rush for them. I don't think there's not super solid pushing potential and death ball potential from Void Boys. He could be a bit more casual about his farm and decide, maybe I go for a farming item. He did put that one point in the Great Cleave. Maybe he goes for like a Helm the Dominator. There's a lot of choices for a spin, and the question remains, is it going to be a farming spin or a fighting spin? He does pick up the Morbid Mask. That doesn't tell us anything just yet, so we'll have to wait and see. I'm, I'm itching towards that Mask of Madness. Yeah, I think he wants right. to I have think that raw right. power. Mm -hmm. Hit hard, hit fast. See if that's going to be the case or not. Look at this ward battle over by the ancient stack, though. They get this very deep sentry ward in there. It's going to be out of the vision of the other sentry Speaking on the low ground. Sentries, you called it, man. There it is. They needed that. So very good. Now they won't be caught out by these secondary traps. They're going anyway. Fisher they block. Oh, oh no! What a setup. Plus Poner comes in from the high ground to dish in, but he ends up eating a raise. And these ancients. Oh God! Get him off me! He's actually going to move into the pit. And he's like, just to die me now. They're coming. Yeah, they're they're coming. coming. And he does get taken down. That one raise. She was like, I didn't think it was going to do that much damage. And that Fisher block actually. He saved his life, at least from the side of Leviathan. So, meanwhile, Schwan actually gets a kill top lane onto Jenkins, getting caught up with a glimpse coming through, followed up by the call down. Easy kill for Void Boys. Jenkins just doesn't have any real way to. He's level two. Mm -hmm. He's an off lane beast master. He's level two. He's the lowest level in the game with the Earth Shaker. That's disastrous. And these ancients, he hasn't taken them yet. He's only got level one wild axes. This is just so bad right now coming up for Jenkins. They also, during that little scuttle in the mid lane, dewarded the sentry in the mid. Already have one trap set up. They, they sentried the sentry yeah. again. God. Another counter to the counter, Mott. That's, that's right. It's ridiculous. It's like 1 a.m. Dude, get off my back. There's a game in a game here with this ward battle. It's out of control. Inception. So Shibby has got to be careful. He does not want to get caught out with both of them. He doesn't have a DD right now, but the second that 747 wants to make that commit to go, he just charges on in, gets out that second trap, and unless there's help nearby, Shibby could be in trouble. In fact, he could be like, hey, Zebra, come here. You know, I don't want this to happen. Make sure you're nearby with the telekinesis just in case he does make that commit to like, go. Here's the trade off. You leech experience mid, and then when I come back, you keep me safe. That's what he wants. Mm -hmm. And that's a good trade. Sentry underneath this tier one observer ward for the dire squad, and it won't get countered. The sentry just goes uh -huh. down, and I don't know if there was vision for Nushim. 
They got the sentry. <laughs> it's a counter, counter, counter. Too many sentries. You can just see how much both these teams are putting behind this mid lane. Yeah. They want one of these two titans to come out pretty damn fast. Shadow Fiend obviously has a bit, bit of a higher impact later into the game, but TA, definitely nothing to scoff at, can snowball out of control. And she is doing pretty well in farm. Her net worth is fourth currently, but like the top four in net worth are all very close. A couple hundred uh, net worth uh, apart between the four of them. So 747 is obviously having a good time. He's sitting pretty far back now. I don't think he took the ancient stack yet. There's uh, a double stack here for Void Boys if they want to take it. They'll TP bottom instead. They want to put pressure on Jenkins as he's the easier target to bully. Uh-oh. This is what we see. Once Jarcopter hits that level 6, level 7, he goes to the opposite side of the map and tries to make a gank happen. And now here it is. They got a smoke up Fly, who had been like the Steve Nash of these kills, always there and ready to assist. He's now going to be hand in hand. And they're going for Shredder instead. This oh, is a they're going to converge. They, they scouted him out. This is going to be an easy takedown. Pretty much no effort. Just the rocket barrage is all it's going to take. And of all people, it's going to be 747 who gets to pick up that kill. Oh, they're looking for Jenkins. The TP coming in from Poner. He doesn't have the Sprout mana, though. Jenkins will TP away. It looks like he won't make it out. Call down's going to go. It's actually just wasted. Fisher not coming from Fly, just a bit too far off before it could hit it. And in that last engagement when they killed Trudder, they didn't even need Omega Poner. He TPs in, can't get the kill there, but still. Void Boys are moving very well around the map. They're using the jungle, they're using their ancients, they're using all of the lanes that are given to them right now to find kills, to find farm. And uh, it's so far working for them. There is a little bit of a lead going their way. It's only 1,000 in net worth very early on here and a experience margin of nil. It's actually zero, so we'll see how this turns out. I'm pretty nervous, though, for Leviathan and the supports. They seem to be you know, pretty slow. You know, Newstrom is able to finally throw together his boots on the Lena. Has good levels. About to get level 6. Again, that Laguna would be huge for them. So, and able to get it right then. Well, level there. 3 for the Rubik is not but, great. Yeah, the Rubik. I mean, TP scrolls all you got, you know, and... He's just trying to get some booties. Well, he gets some now, but it's obviously didn't have his bread and butter and his spell seal quite yet. Would be big this game, getting all that fissure. Even teleport. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, anything, honestly. Just something to get involved with. Yeah. Stormhammer. No, wait, that's on his own team. I was thinking of last game earlier. <laughs> Glimpse would be nice. Yeah, that would actually be Glimpse, Static Storm, all those abilities. Yeah. They're easier to, and Fisher, obviously. They're all easy to, to steal, to pick up, and for the most part. So Shredder now has Treads. We still don't know if it's Morbid Mask, Mask of Madness, or Helm of the Dominator. Let's so wait and see. Meanwhile, 747 looking for bottom rune spot. He'll find it to haste rune that he bottles up, which is a great rune for Templar Assassin. That is frightening for any support or any underleveled hero on the map. And then the smoke from Void Boys. They're going to look for another target. Might be Shredder yet again. Going to try to stifle his farm, and they should find him here. The smoke will break momentarily. Oh, and they're not oh, going to go. Oh. They're going to cut towards the mid lane instead here. They see a good target in Shibby. They're going to make the move, and there's the call down and the fissure. They're going to connect right on top. He's going to unleash his Requiem, not going to do as much damage he like as it has to work through the Requiem. He ends up going down. Big damage onto Susie, but he's going to be able to shrug it off. And oh, Flying Zebra, who tries to come in to help out, he is going to be taken apart as well. Make it a two for nil trade in favor for the Void Boys. And while that's happening, Leviathan realized they can't TP quickly enough to react. They'll war cry, they'll push into the bottom tier one tower, but still, it is a Mask of Madness. So, as you called, he's not going for that, you know, more let me just farm up for a long time. He wants to be involved in these fights, and that's one way to do it. You're going to hit fast, you're going to hit hard, as you mentioned earlier. Will he be able to do it, though? They still need even Jenkins to get his level 6. Their support, so Lena, got there first. It's it's a slow start for Leviathan right now. And Did he take that Ancient stack? No, it's still there, actually. He only went level 1 into Wild Axes and put an, another point in Inner Beast. He's pretty much said, okay, I don't want to have to do these Ancients. I want to make my team fatter. I want to make my team stronger. Inner Beast is one way to do that. Another way is to buy Mech, and that's exactly what Shibi's going for on the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, this mech will help out. Add a big, bit of extra sustain once those call down come in and that first big side blade attack. They'll be able to kind of withstand and push I on, but it will be too little, too late. Look at Nushim over here. Oh, nice last hit. That's actually so sick. All right, nice mid lane. Cheeky play, but here we go. Call down the fly out, fly stops Nushim on his TP, but mid lane is where the action is at. Kinetic field is going to be going down. Shibby's going to be dropped, and they still get the Lena here. Omega Poner barely alive, still able to walk away. Void Boys continue to advance on forward, now 9-3. to three. And that was a botched engagement. They glimpsed a little bit before the, the call down actually hit, so Schwan kind of getting a little bit too ahead of himself there. They still get the kill regardless, and that's a Shadow Fiend going down before he can get mech, and this mech is getting more and more delayed, and he really can't afford that right now. They really need that mech, and they need it desperately, so that's another here that's not doing particularly well, or as well as he 
should. Jenkins, again, we talked a lot about. 747 in Viz up. Going for an early death later, more than likely, with that Mithril Hammer. Underneath the Tier 2 Tower is Zebra. He knows. He knows there's somebody walking about. They had an Observer Ward here. They saw him get the Invis rune. And uh, instead of just maybe trying to walk up, they're going to probably take this Tier 1 Tower. It is Glyphed. We'll see if anybody rotates. It looks like they're too busy pushing the top Tier 1. Yep, Shredder trying to go chopping away at that one right now. But it's only going to be for the equal trade here. Mercy, please, who's looking to charge on forward and get that early BKB. And then Midas now complete for Mr. Poner here on his Furion. Which just all seems to be kind of coming together nicely for Void Boys. Leviathan need a huge team fight to get that huge XP swing their way is what's important. And it might have to come in the form of a Primal War setup followed up with your Laguna. And they can start to claim some of these bounties. It's not going to be easy once there's a Desolator up for 747. The good thing is that Leviathan will have a mech advantage very soon. They really cannot let this Roche go, though, and I think they, they did spot it out. They see Schwann is moving nearby. They see a couple of Shreans heading into the Roche pit. They have an understanding, but it looks like they, they care more about the Tier 2 top lane. Yeah, I mean, do they have a bird on the way or at least something to scout it on out? Doesn't look like it too much, so... Roche now below half. It could be at a trade here for possibly the Tier 2. They need to get this Tier 2 out. if they're going to give this away, I think. I don't know if it's going to be easy. The full creep wave comes out. If TPs. They're trying to clear it out with the leaning here, but already fly in Schwan here, and this is going to be dangerous. He has a level 4 glimpse. If they rotate to the top lane, he'll be able to isolate one of them with that glimpse, but it actually doesn't look like they're going to charge on forward and go for anything. They saw the disruptor. They back together. They make sure they don't get caught out. That's fair, but again, they don't get that trade. They will get a Tier 1 tower mid. That's fine. Shibby gets the last hit there. He really needs that mech. Is it flying out? It's going to be there, and there's also an Ogre Club for Shredder, who's building towards that beacon. This is the standard Sven build, Mask of Madness, BKB, maybe get a blink first and foremost usually, but not this game. He's just trying to tank up and try to stay alive after picking up the Mask of Madness. So, where are we at right now? This TA has a Desolator done. She just finished it. Yeah. Um, that's frightening as all hell. God. Well, you know, it's cheaper now. That recipe is what's taken down and with that, becomes like a much easier and quick option here for your TA. And this becomes scary. These these little frail supports like your Rubik, like your Lena, not gonna be able to stand up to like what two shots from it. But okay, they charge on it. Mega Painter gonna eat the stun. They get a fade ball out, but uh oh, they end up walking to a static storm. Zebra gonna be easily brought down, and they get the glimpse back on a Shredder. Lock him in place with the kinetic field and the Sprout. He is still on the run, but he has nowhere to hide here. Eventually, the trap's gonna catch up with them, and there's not a whole lot that even Nushim can do to save him. So with that, one more right click gonna get bopped right there. It's gonna be going to Mr. Poner. It looks like. Oh no, Poner denies the tower as well. It's 747 who gets the kill. And everything continues to come together nicely. That's a two man drop, and Void Boy's now ahead 11 to 3, 15 minutes in. They got this 3,000 net worth lead, and despite not having the best early game uh, lineup, they're still doing really well. The Furion is now coming into his own. He's got his treads. Going for Orkin next, I imagine, if he has the Robe of the Magi. So, Void Boys are... Everything's coming up them at this point. They don't really need to worry about too much. They need to keep farming, try to keep shutting down Jenkins as well. Shredder, Jenkins has nothing. Shibby could be the X Factor for Leviathan. How are you feeling right now for, for Leviathan's chances, honestly? Not man. good. I mean, I'm waiting to see a Primal Roar even happen this game. I, I, I mean, I'm sure Jenkins, the opportunity hasn't really been presented there. It's been meant them more on the defense and getting caught out elsewhere. But they need to find a way to pull it together. Get that Primal War and that Laguna flying. You know, they have these abilities. Put them to use. Get that kill. Get that early bounty swing, especially that XP swing their way. They certainly need it. For now, they're at least scouting out and adding a bit of side pressure to this top lane, but that just means that Void Boys are on the prowl, and they're going to come across Shredder, who's trying to farm out this stack. They kill this! They could get the stack as well! Oh, no! They still got Fly Cannon. Mercy, please, like, give me that. Ah, look at that! That's yeah, mine. 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 Give me all that gold. Mine, 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 mine. Oh, this is not good. That was their offshore account. Now stolen away. That was always a possibility, but they were waiting too long to take that ancient stack. I don't know why, but either way, Void Boys will grab it. 747 is back up to 1600 gold. Mercy Please is sitting on a full BKB flying out now, plus a Morbid Mask. This game gets tougher and tougher by the minute. Jenkins has yet to use a promo where I'm pretty sure, throughout the entire game. They just have to do something, and Void Boys are making sure that they're the ones doing uh, everything in this game so far. I don't know if it was too much of a risk letting that gyrocopter through in the first... I don't hate to yeah. pull back to the draft, but what did they start out with? They banned out the Queen of Pain and Clockwork. something else. Yeah, Clockwork. I don't know about that. You know, where gyrocopter's going to be able to slip on through, it could be a bit scary if you're not considering getting it for yourself or unless they were hoping to get it for themselves. I don't think they were just anticipating having this rough of a time 
especially on Jenkins, but also kind of on Shredder, who's sitting at 5,000 net worth. The hero just doesn't farm as well as like a Templar Assassin, or for, for, for that matter, a Templar Assassin, a Gyrocopter, or... Oh, hold that thought. Oh my god, he just blew him up. I'm, I'm sure that was a two shot. Glimpse back in on the Shredder. Oh, Magic field call down. He's just dead. He gets the Stormhammer off, but then gets blown up. 747 and Mercy, please combine up to get the kill. And it gets worse and worse. It's 14 to 3. This is looking like one of those stomp games we've seen at 6.84C, yeah. or B, rather. You know, hopefully it's, you know, not Leviathan on a bit of a tilt from their previous series where they did also go, you know, 0 and 2. This is just, of course, game 1 here, but it has been clearly a struggle for them thus far. God, there's a Blink Dagger on the Earthshaker for Fly. They're, well, how much net worth are they at? Almost 10,000. <laughs> It, 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 the draft wasn't that bad for Leviathan. They should be getting this this crushed. But the Sven, uh, the Sven pickup leaves a bad taste in my mouth, as, as it oh, did last time they're around. Spot out. Newsham does nothing easy. Another fly fissure to help set it up. And with that, they just easily knock it down. Another kill for Mr. 747. This game feels over. I'm going to be honest with you, man. It feels real, real rough. And uh, this has just been... Support play from Void Boys. Yep. Schwan's played well. Fly has played, played fantastically. And then, I mean, it's been, they made it easy for Mercy, Please, yep. and 747. Like, they've been getting all the kills, but, like, that doesn't matter. Like, all this, uh, the, the support play has set everything up for Void Boys so far. And they're going to get another two church tower as well. Yeah, they're waiting. They're farming on the side. I mean, for all we know, Leviathan could already be thinking about game number two and what they need to do to change it on up. But they also could be looking to go out, you know, not without a fight. So for now, they'll kind of try to keep Void Boys at bay, though they are going to be able to clean up that tier 2 top lane. This leaves only one more outer tower for Leviathan, and that is on the bottom. But I got to say, this Void Boys squad, I mean, these teams like Void Boys, like Wheel, like Complexity, like E-Hug, it seems like one day they're able to get a win off one team, then the next day they drop the game to the same team thereafter. So I don't want to be too judgmental too quick, but... Void Boys are looking pretty damn good. Yeah, and Leviathan, you mentioned Telsing. They really need to just, even if they are to lose this game, they have to just, they have to rein it in. They have good chemistry. They have good inherent Dota knowledge and skill. Their draft was solid. They just need to play better. They need to make sure they're they're not on tilt. And that's easier said than done. They're going to smoke up. And this almost feels like a Hail Mary play from Leviathan, but if it works out, if they get a kill or two, then it's going to be worth oh, it, especially oh, if it's Mercy Please. It could be on Mercy Please. It looks like it will be. He's going right into him. They got the Primal War and Telkinesis, the Fade Bolt, the Laguna. They throw everything in the kitchen sink to make sure this gyrocopter goes down for god's sakes now jack is trying to get away but he gets echoed right on the neck he's gonna get dropped you take our gyro we take two of you void boys able to still trade and come out the better it almost is worth it for leviathan if you look at it from yeah. a purely gold standpoint it is because that's how farmed the gyrocopter is and how under farmed this uh this jenkins beastmaster and flying zebra rubik are it's just uh, like if, if that if that trade is working out for you, then it's a problem. Shredder's gonna get Orchid and Glimpse back in. And he's gonna TP out. They don't have anything to actually stop this. So that was a really smart TP from Shredder. Yep. Doesn't have his BKB yet. So he'll survive. He needs that BKB if they're going to come back in this game. Like one BKB Mask of Madness, maybe you get like a Chrysalis fight, and all of a sudden, like this game could be even. Yeah, BKB on him, BKB on Shibby as well for a Shadow Fiend will yeah. certainly help out. I mean, Fly had been putting in the, the work with these setups. You saw the echo there at the back end, even the setups from coming out with uh, Schwan on, with the glimpse. Been very, very good. But we've been making the call out for Leviathan to get something set up. They finally are able to get it there with that smoke movement. We'll see if it's going to be enough of a morale boost for them to get their heads back into the game. But Void Boys probably taking the safer road, looking to wait out on the yes. clock, see if when Roche does come back up, and go in there, get the Aegis, clean out the last uh, Tier 2 tower, and maybe make a push into the high ground. Yeah, I mean, the, there's no reason for them to play aggressively at this point other than they want to end the game early. They don't want Sven to become a beast. But you, you have you have a gyrocopter and you have a TA who's super farmed. You just picked up BKB. There's no real reason to rush it yet. Uh, it's a lot of R's, but it's true. At this point, Leviathan, they need a miracle, and I think Void Boys know that. So they're going to stick together. They even go for a smoke themselves, but they're not going to find anybody unless it's their own jungle, which they are headed there, but they see him. This is not going to be a good fight for Void Boys. Maybe Leviathan actually getting turned on. Yeah, they're going to lose two. Just kidding. Void Boys saved real easy. They pop the BKB for Mercy. Please throw it on the call down. Static Storm as well. And Leviathan, despite having the high ground advantage, get blown up with the two heroes there. Yeah, maybe if they had all of Leviathan right there ready on the high ground, it could have been a bit different with everything ready to go. But yeah, even then, Void Boys, even as a full man unit, are just already so farmed up 
that I don't even think that trade would have gotten. The good too thing well was there him. there was an echo slam, so maybe without that there could have been something. But I I, I don't know. I, I really don't think even with all five they were in such a tight compact area, and uh, T PA will or rather TA will do work in that situation with side blades. Well, medallion pickup on your disruptor, a bit unusual, but hell, you know they got the Roche kind of a lineup makes things a lot easier, and you can always upgrade into your beautiful solar crest. Certainly, why not? Bit of a funky grab, but yeah, will help get the job done nonetheless. Very patient Newsham in this top lane, waiting and scouting. It's mercy please is nearby, but man, he's he's freaking rich, man. Thirty-four hundred gold already on this gyro. Finish up that helmet of dominator, or go for either MKB or pick up a butterfly. One of those three options, I think, are probably the most likely. I mean. Let's see. MKB could be good, but there's no butterfly being built currently. But later on down the road, it'll be nice to have. And maybe he goes for like an SMY just to tank up a bit more. I don't know if he needs it. He already has the BKB. He's got a lot of options, actually. And now a blink as well for 747. Now we got our BKBs now on the side of Leviathan. And it looks like they're ready to put it to use on top of the DD oh, that going Shibi in. has. So they're going to smoke up and they're beelining it right towards that Roche pit where there are already Void Boys in the pit waiting here. But on the outskirts, still a gyrocopter and fly with that blinking Earthshaker. He's pretty far from the action, but... Oh, they went for Omega Poner. He blinked out. They didn't know the blink was there. They went for the wrong decision. They should have headed to the Roche pit. And now Roche is going to be free for 7. 4 7 in squad. Oh, bummer. Well, very good heads up. Props to Omega Poner, man, to kind of be the distraction and just kind of slip away from any sort of trouble. And now Void Boys have a firm grasp on the Aegis, that extra life, and a bit more confidence now to make that push. It looks like next up on the docket for them, clearing out this tier two in the bottom. Yeah, and that's the last tier two tower of the game for Leviathan. I guess it wasn't necessarily the wrong choice, but when you look at it from our standpoint, it feels like it was. But then again, if they make a Hail Mary play and head to Roche and they lose that fight, the game's just over at that point. Yeah. So it's tough to say which way to go. Um, and Void Boys are making all the right decisions. And that, that Blink Dagger pickup is so huge for Omega Poner. They're not styling, they're not picking up big fancy items, they're picking up exactly what they need to pick up in order to win the game. Uh, and a Scotty on Gyrocopter seems to be what's being thrown together. That's unusual. I mean, that definitely is one way to tank up without going S and Y. And to kite and control the enemy team, the life <laughs> and are, are not feeling good about Passing this. over that MKB and everything seems a bit funny to me, but man, they're going to look to make it work. He's now dancing around the high ground right there. It's 747 who just hold the Aegis so they can kind of dangle her up in the front. Let her go to town on this uh, tier three with the help of Mr. Poner and his little army. But eventually Leviathan are going to have to do something to respond to this. Not easy. They need a couple man storm hammer into God strength cleave damage. Primal roar. But Void Boys aren't going to be grouped up like that unless they get baited in by a hero. And Rubik could be the optimal target to try to bait. That's not easy. I mean, nope. <laughs> so that's about as as uh, mot noty as I can get. It's just that this this defense is not easy. He's not even going for a spell still. He's clearly saving it right here. Stormhammer. Oh, he's making a stage. Oh, we got it. Oh, he got the Fissure, but they're already committing on forward. Calldown's going to be there. BKBs have been popped. Requiem, Requiem to be unleashed. Mm. Void Boys are on their way out. And man, Susie very low, still able to hold on to that Aegis. Good hold. Good hold. But Requiem is now down. Echo Slam is also down, though. And they didn't lose a single hero for Leviathan. Yep. So, like I said, good hold. They'll keep their Tier 3 tower alive, albeit low in HP 397. And Jenkins is thanking his lucky stars. He's still trying to go Necro 1 at 26 minutes into the game. This has not been a good game for him. His net worth is just above the Disruptor and even lower than Lena, who now is very close to Yule's. And they'll go for another Hail Mary smoke, which is smart because Shibi's farming bottom. They have Shredder in the jungle. Um, so there are, are a couple heroes off the map, but there is one hero showing. But Void Boys seem to understand that something's happening now. They're sitting at their own secret shop. They're sitting pretty far back together and allowing Mercy Police to form up the Scotty. Yeah, I mean, they still have this ward right by the river. So, you know, they're looking to see if they're spreading anywhere. Clearly, no one's top. Good only the side one's shot showing down too. there. And yeah, so they got to know by deduction that something's a bit fishy. But oh, Schwan could be caught out here. Jenkins, Primal Roar, looking to move on in. But where's the help? Not close enough. So, with that, Fly's going to move on in. They dish out their own Fissure plus Static Storm. Not going to be able to connect anyone with the kinetic field, but they have the glimpse there. So, Dushin's going to get pulled back in. He should be taken care of. And he will be shot down. And they're also going to get the twofer. Both supports are going to be going down as they. They are just so weak and fragile. And with that, Void Boys end up picking up two. And what was a gank attempt happening for Leviathan? I mean, Jenkins was there. He had the lead in, but they he just went didn't too have fast, the help. Man. Yeah. Too far ahead. Jenkins is, uh, that was.
was a bit of a panic play. You see the, the enemy leaving the jungle. You want to try to get the kill before he gets out. And you go for a war and you think that, okay, you have Fisher, My team can get here. But Void Boys are quick to respond as they have been this entire series. Their positioning is really good. And it's, they just have the items to work with that, that Leviathan don't. That Blink Dagger, obviously, from an Earthshaker, blinking up and fishing just to make sure he saves his teammate. It's tough. Any, any situation now, you, you kind of have to be all in on certain kills. Shibby is going to try to TP out. They don't have Fisher. Force doesn't cancel it. He doesn't cancel it himself by panicking. So that's good. At least he survived. Were they trying to force into an Enchant Totem? It was almost there. Yeah, it was, was going to be sick. <laughs> that would have been sick nasty. Not happening, though. No. Well, they pull back and away. Leviathan, they got to be pretty low on the smoke down here. They didn't use an awful lot. Yeah, they're they're down to smokes. The only YOLO smokes available. It looks like their next attempt is either the old-fashioned way of going for a pickoff while they have to walk over all these traps along the way and these wards that are kind of put out pretty nicely here for Void Boys. Or, um, you know, they have to wait and just defend in the high ground instead. It's actually impossible for them to try to find a gank without giving vision to the enemy team. At least it should be. 747 is going to start plopping a lot, a lot more traps down now that he's level 16, level 17. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, it's going to have to come down to defending. Void Boys know this. They're going to push in. Kinetic Field goes. They even... They should see that. Did he not see that? He has a gem. Okay, well, I guess they're not going for it. Whatever. Here they come. Back at the bottom lane. Looking to push in the high ground here. Tier 3 is already pretty dang low. Not no more Aegis, right? No, it's been expired. Yeah, that just it just went down, I think. Yep. Now it's just a matter of finding that window and get on in there. They went up to the high ground spot again, but they still didn't deward. Like they had the gem on Schwan. He's too far away. Like it's like, are you gonna get up there or not, buddy? Well, I don't understand how that ward's still alive. But I mean, I, the Leviathan are not complaining, and that's a really good ward to have when you're defending high ground. So they'll find a boar instead. It's not really what they wanted. Roche is back up in about. Three minutes, I believe, mm -hmm. which is big. 747 and Void Boys have such an inherent map advantage. What about Shredder? Is he at a point where he could hit a Stormhammer and just win them that fight? I don't think so. Not quite yet, but he's getting close. Oh, yeah. He's going to also consider... Uh-oh. He's going to get potentially caught out. Immediate BKB. Oh and what a sprout. Just forces him against the wall, and he has nowhere to run. Here comes the call down. I don't know if that sprout was intentional, but my goodness, it was wonderful. That was sick. He, the BKB came out. He... Invisibility! going to be lifted now and we'll get back underway didn't really miss a whole lot it looks like they were able to bring down the Sven obviously and with that it's enough momentum for Void Boys to push on in he does have that buyback ready to go to pull out a solid defense uh, we'll see here if they're going to be able to do it. They're going in. They're, they want this tier 3 tower. This could be the end of the game. And they jump in with Omega Pono. They get the Orchid Sprout up as well. Glim is back in. That'll be on Anushim. Spell was stolen. It was Sprout. Not the best. They blow up that Lina. She's done so. Eight seconds for the spend. He doesn't want to buy back. They're going to work on the range. Rex Dakota. This is going to be tough to defend. And they're cracking away at it. Range Rex looks to be going down here. Omega Pono. Going to be able to easily assisting that with 747 of that Desolator. They will to pop out Mercy, please. Not needing to pull out the BKB quite yet, but there's going to be Primal Roar. And they force him down to safety. Jenkins is going to be taken apart rather easily there. Static Storm, BKB 747 looking to charge into the back lines here. Enough to force Shibby back to the fountain. Easy pickoff right there for the Lena. Echo Slam on the Shredder and his solo. And with that, he will go down. A minute out on the sidelines does have the buyback, but the Raxes will go. And Void Boys are going to be able to strike first inside the home base. 26 to 5. Very dominant performance from Void Boys. Five in one. kills? Five. That's it, man. That is not what you want to see from Leviathan. 
And they, they're going to have to use his buyback, but it's just too too little too late. Fly's been making plays, and make opponents gotten farm. They all do so much damage, there's so much control. He's going to buy back, and this is this is the last fight, is what it's looking like. Yeah, uh, and a lot of gold on Shibby. He needs to just spend it at this point just for his final defense. But it actually looks like that with the up. buyback, yeah, the Void Boys will just decide instead to pull back, wait out for the Roche, get that, and then go for another base push. That's, I mean, Roche is up very soon. I don't fault the threat. They, they play very safe, solid Dota. This is, uh, this is a team of all Chinese players, by the way. Chinese... Uh, uh, Foreign exchange students? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I know what you meant. Yeah, I... Uh, I'm losing my vocabulary here a little bit later, but they 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 play. You, you can see the Chinese uh, play style in them. They play safe Dota. They play solid Dota. They don't try to go for too much, and they take the advantage when they have it. So yeah. All right, 32 minutes in, no real other items being built. Jenkins is just having such a rough time in it. Can't talk about it any further other than he's only got a necro one at this point. Yeah, it's a hard game. It's a very hard game. Yeah. I love you, Jenkins, but this is just not the Beastmaster game, unfortunately, for you. It's, it's been a hard time. I, it's unfortunate, man. I feel like every time I cast him, he has just the roughest time, whether his team wins or loses. Like, like he's he's put into these situations where the heroes aren't the best or he's getting shut down. It's another situation like that coming through. Well, he might be able to make a flank here onto Mr. Poner. Oh. Just blinks down the low ground. Game sprout, sense. and he is out of there. Yeah. I mean, at a drop of a hat, he was just like, oh. Pressure's coming. I'm out of here. See you later. He's out. Roche is up. The rest of his team, they're already doing work. And that means Roche is dead. Yeah, Roche died within seconds. Daedalus came through a couple of times. They have a Desolator. They have a Medallion, which they didn't even put on Roche a couple of times. Uh, this is... The, the amount of items that Void Boys have in comparison to Leviathan is disgusting. There's a full scythe on this core here. Yep. 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 Oof. Boys are looking good. Looking like void men right now. So where do you go for game number two for Leviathan? Like, no Beastmaster, no Sven, hopefully, I think? I think Ban out Gyro. Yes. It was Kuroki himself that said, you know, any carry player would love any opportunity to get a Gyro and play it. So you got to make sure if you're not looking to get that Gyro yourself with a first pick advantage. I mean, they, I think Void Boys had first pick this game. Yes. They did. So we'll see, depending on if Leviathan put more priority into his side over first pick. But if they do get first pick... I want to say they had first pick. I'm pretty sure they had first pick. Don't quote me on that. All right. Well, you know, depending on that, if they want to get something like a gyro for themselves, then so be it. Otherwise, consider banning it out. Maybe go back to your roots. Play the Leviathan specials. Play that Leviathan. funky stuff. Sven's somewhat funky, but... When you're down 0-4, you kind of have to... Oh, oh, three rather. That nature's wrath blows people up. Susie's sent for seven with a beautiful BKD. Fisher comes in, new shim in trouble. A couple more right clicks and he'll fall. No desolator proc coming in to do enough damage, but there's Shibby getting Scotty down. He'll wreck him. Seven four seven has the Aegis. He doesn't give a damn. Refractions up. There's the Fisher. Finally, they pick up the kill, but it's just the Aegis. And now Shibby's down for 70 seconds. Yep. LSA is going to go through. Glimpse back and Echo on to three. Dota Ooh. Couch, rather. Dota Coach Jenkins is going to fall. Shredder does pick up the kill on the Earthshaker. Buy that coming in from the Fury Round. Wants to TP. And gets back into the fray. Sprout is up. He gets it on Anushim. Now there's going to be a storm hammer for Shredder. Glimpse back in. He does, I believe, go down in the last couple of hits from the flat cannon. And with three dead, that is it. That is GG. Hard game for Leviathan. But Void Boys do make it look rather easy. I mean, it's expected 747. We know the notorious work he could do with a Templar Assassin. Shibby was able to hold his own there, but, you know, 747. They did bring down Chippy at one point, and it's credit to Fly, man.